This Cop Block video is brought to you by the Police Accountability Tour, which will connect and skill share with police accountability advocates from August to December 2013 in Austin, New York, Cape Town, South Africa, Oakland, Denver, Detroit, Chicago, Atlanta, and New Orleans. Find out more about the Police Accountability Tour at copblock.org tour. Dozens of officers are in hot water tonight. Their police chief says 75 officers violated the department's own rules during a deadly police chase in November in which two unarmed suspects died. The chase started when two officers outside the Cuyahoga Justice Center thought they heard a gunshot fired from Timothy Russell's car. Russell then led police on a 23-minute chase. It ended in East Cleveland with a shootout that killed Russell and his passenger, Melissa Williams. Our two-month investigation reveals that we are dealing with a systemic failure in the Cleveland Police Department. Command failed. Communications failed. The system failed. A couple of weeks after those comments from Mike DeWine went on the road with the cop lock tour, I stopped by the Cleveland Police Department to ask some questions. You need to put that down. Can I ask why? This is a public building, correct? This is police headquarters. Right. Yes. I had a question about a shooting that happened in town here a couple months ago. I need to speak with a, uh, uh, a ranking officer. He has a video here. What kind of punishment do you think would be appropriate for the shooters? That's not up for me to say. Right. I'm just curious to find your. That you're a, not up for me to you're say a person. So. You have the ability to logic, use logic and reason, and conclude not if the situation say. panned out correctly or didn't. And I'd hope if you thought it didn't, you'd speak out against that. Especially because you know you work in this building, and I'm sure you, you know, might know some of the individuals involved. <coughs> Do you know the officers you shot? Do you know them to be heavy-handed, or have they shot people in the past? My concern are the double standards that are probably going to be afforded to the shooters because they wear badges. I know if my friends and I went out and shot and killed two people that we would be held accountable if we, if we initiated force. I mean, a lot of bad can happen when people sit by and, and let the claimed authorities get away with things. They didn't do anything to deserve to be slaughtered in a hail of gunfire has happened. You know, the individuals acted and they should be held responsible. The fact they wear a badge doesn't have anything to do with it. Sir, there's no recording devices in this building. Shut that off, please. Can you point to something that says that that's the case? Shut it off. Is this a public building? It's, sir, turn that off. Are there, are there cameras on me right now? Sir, you can shut it off on me. Well, let's, I'm trying to have a conversation. I'd like to document that conversation. And my, that's, that's not going to happen. My concern is about the two individuals that were shot and killed by Cleveland police employees a few months ago. Stand by. Isn't it strange that people that claim to be accountable and transparent want no documentation of interactions to be had? What, does that, what kind of stage is that set? Especially as I can see at least one camera, two cameras on us here right now. To stand idly by as stuff like that happens just makes it you complacent and it allows for it to happen. That's why I think it behooves people who actually think about this situation to speak out and stand on their principles. Front desk table. Yes. You, two what? Two vehicles? Where? They're coming down here? Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So you're trying to tell me that no one's going to have a conversation with me right now? Cleveland residents, are you happy to pay for this level of service? So will those responsible be held accountable? We just obtained these investigative reports that detail why so many officers are in trouble. They show that without permission, they joined the chase, left the city, and were speeding as fast as 125 miles per hour. Cleveland Police Department states, policy states that no more than two police vehicles can participate directly in a pursuit 
except under unusual and well-articulated circumstances. In this situation, at least 59 vehicles were involved without the sector supervisor's knowledge or permission. 104 Cleveland patrol officers were involved in this deadly chase last November. The officers' charges include insubordination, failure to get permission to join this chase, and falsifying duty reports. We will come out with a report, and it will be in writing, of what we believe, with the facts we have, contributed to this particular tragic incident. A report, huh? Do you think that conclusion is satisfactory to the friends and family of Tim Russell and Melissa Williams? Jeff Fulmer, the head of the police union, claimed that our officers did a great job. Really? So what can be done? Frank Jackson alluded to it. Mayor Frank Jackson acknowledges the incident damaged the public's trust in Cleveland's police force. Once you cross the line, it takes a while to get back. Without your trust, without you blindly granting authority to those who claim it simply based on their place of occupation, these kind of scenarios most likely will never happen. As I noted on a post just a few days after Tim Russell and Melissa Williams were slain, at the crux of this incident and all other horrific incidents like it is a lack of accountability that will always exist when policing is provided by a monopoly, which at its core is founded on the initiation of force, the right to steal your wealth to protect you. We can do better, and we should demand better. Those officers violated department rules and regulations that night. There's nobody that came to work that evening that ever would want to get involved in this situation.